And welcome to the Vonu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Ray O2, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, for more information or to become a stakeholder, just visit Pasnia, P A Z N I A dot com. Uh, big things are in the works here at Veritas, uh, as is kind of per usual. Uh, this week, our new pond got dug out. Uh, it was supposed to take place during a Vonu Fest, but I guess thankfully, um, at least in. in some regards, it didn't happen that week, but it did happen this week, um, and uh, you know, take us. It'll take us much further into the realm of self-sufficiency when it fills up. Um, water for the garden and animals, uh, swimming, fish in a few years, and uh, geothermal uh, heating and cooling when the embassy is built. Uh, I also just announced our first gathering for 2024, uh, reading verbatim here from the post in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence on Telegram. Uh, year four, 2024, is nearly upon us, which means more gatherings in the second realm. The first event, our spring gathering, will be a special one. On April 8th, the Great North American Eclipse occurs and we'll have prime viewing from Veritas Pasnia, right in the heart of Little Egypt. Uh, official dates are April 5th through 9th, uh, but of course, vetted self-liberators are welcome to uh, stay before and or after. Uh, keep a lookout in the various Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chats for updates uh, as the date draws near, especially if podcasts are few and far, far between, um, then you might have to check. You might have to actually, you know, come check it out. Uh, the final item, uh, at VonuFest 4, a number of us realized that there were like seven or eight talented developers, uh, hackers, in attendance, and uh, that we'd be remiss not to organize m- more concretely. Uh, we've started a bunch of different chats and channels on our new favorite app, Simple X, which is touted as a better signal. Uh, we've got a general committee of correspondence, a uh, general department of technology one, and, the sub- uh, and then subgroups, which focus on specific projects, some of which we'll be talking about today. I'll get those links added to the Pasnia site soon. Uh, but in the meantime, check the show notes, uh, vonupodcast.com forward slash 187 uh, to find them now. And that final announcement pr- uh, provides a nice segue into uh, today's conversation. I'm joined once again by our friend Jamie Baconic, a hardware hacker and permaculture farmer, uh, to dive deeper into some possible technology projects and potentialities. Uh, as a few examples, the Pasnia map, uh, the coming transportation and logistics mobile app, uh, help wanted classified job boards or ads uh, for folks who followed you know my work for a long time. Think Darklands um, in this and you know in this regard, um, and then ambitious decentralized distributed uh, peer-to-peer networks, uh, etc. Lots lots of good lots of good good projects uh, being discussed over there. Really really happy to see it. Um, and yeah, I guess on that note, if a few of these have been on my, on my mind for a couple of years, and I really just didn't have the technical expertise or with our <laughs> inadequate internet here. Um, to have people, you know, um, you know, accessing my server and such, um, they'd probably stop using it because it would be slow. Um, so we want to give people a good experience out of the box, and that's not what, not until we get, uh, you know, fake Tesla Starlink, which I think you have now, Chamin. Um, we will be, uh, yeah. it's not, not, yeah. not in a position for that for that sort of stuff. But anyways, it, it's it's awesome to see. Um, it's 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 amazing to see so much progress in such a short time. Um, and I, I guess on that note, uh, Jamin also helped me get our own self-hosted Jitsi room uh, set up which uh, gives me a privacy-friendly way to record these podcasts and uh, maybe some other really cool things, things too, uh, which we'll get to very, very shortly. Uh, but uh, all of that out of the way right now, uh, Jamin, uh, welcome back, brother. Uh, how are things in your world? Uh, it's good to be back. I'm pretty good here. I've been pretty productive working on the technology front, at least. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. That's uh, good to hear, but I guess um, you know I, I'm I'm curious. I know a lot of a lot of folks are. Our conversations don't just uh, you know remain in the realm of con- of, of technology, but um, I guess uh, yeah, it's it's been a while. I mean, we we talk. I, I guess we have you on you know once or twice a year usually, but it it, it, it might have been like a year and a half by now. So um, what's well, we'll start with this. What's what's new on the homestead? Uh, you know, gardening, farming items first. Though you know what's what's going on there. Um, most of that's really taken a backseat, but I'm really starting to uh, appreciate the forest gardening that I've done. It's like my, uh, my fields that I've been reforesting have a canopy now and there's just a bunch of wild food growing in it now. So that was really cool this year. Um, But otherwise um, I basically let a bunch of uh, different herb patches that I grow like comfrey that I grow for um, like I, I sell root cuttings for propagation and I make products out of it. Mm -hmm. So I had a whole year to let that recover from a lot of 
like I harvested it pretty heavily the, the year before. So now I just have these massive, massive um, plantings of comfrey. Um, yeah. But that's about it on the, you know, farming and gardening stuff this year. Well, hey, man, um, I, I know even back in 2018 when we, were, when, um, when we had our maybe first conversation, I think you were you had already kind of um, basically uh, with all of your different zones cut down your work to like a half hour, hour a day anyway. So, um, yeah, it seems like you've, you've got everything kind of automated to it to a certain extent. And now it's just kind of hobby projects, which is which is cool. Um, that is something that, that we want to do next year is um, you know, or has, you know, obviously a, a great comfrey plant and. Um, you know, it's a good, it's a good plant to just plant pretty much anywhere. So, um, we're going to do, we're going to, you know, do some more of that. I think. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, well, that's cool. I, I'm, and I'm totally cool with, uh, with a short update on the, on the farming gardening parts. Um, cause you know, we've, we've gone in, in depth on, on, in depth on a lot of those things. Um, and you know, we can, um, as you know, even in the conclusion, if, if something comes to mind, you can, you can always drop in, we can talk about it, but, um, I guess we can, oh, yeah, since, yeah, yeah. since, since your focus has been on the digital realm, we'll go straight into, uh. I guess we, we can go straight in, straight into that um, more general before before we go into what I have spe uh, specifically planned. Um, yeah, you're you're always busy building out infrastructure and hardware stacks, etc. Um, yeah, what's what's got your focus in the, in the digital realm? Uh, what's what are you working on? Well, I uh, got sidetracked pretty good with the AI stuff for a little bit until I got up to speed with that. Um, but otherwise, I've been labbing up different combinations of services that could uh, replace, um, like, first realm cloud services and stuff like that, and examining options and building out my own personal infrastructure and kind of like, um, you know, proof of concept on a lot of systems. Um, I have a system I'm ready to roll out now for networking and network security that will basically be the basis to a uh, like a larger second realm network um been working with uh next cloud both using it in my own like personal productivity and learning how to deploy different parts of it um actually getting into some uh on the roadmap here in the not too distant future, I'm going to start messing with a uh, home assistant with an app called frigate. That's a, um, like a video security, um, app that does all kinds of, uh, AI, um, object and facial recognition and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, just basically, uh, labbing out these systems to see what works and what doesn't and what works the best and um then recommending them to people that are uh trying to do the self-liberated hosting thing mm -hmm. um right now i'm kind of at the point where the personal stuff like you know like the personal use case devices and systems are kind of in the bag and i'm working on more um, small business systems because most self liberators at this point also have some type of side gig they're doing as a small business online that they need some type of internet presence. Mm -hmm. And that hardware setup is very similar, but it's different in the aspect that it has to be more redundant and high, more highly available than just, you know, hosting your own next cloud just to have your data accessible easily like downtime can mean lost profit and lost business and all that. So like I'm basically coming up with the documentation at the same time on how to start out with a very basic system with a couple of devices and be able to scale that up to even if you wanted to run your own, you know, online e-commerce business. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's that's great to hear. Um, that's really great to hear. Um, yeah, and as far as artificial intelligence, I know that's been your you, you've been on that for for a while, and I told you we'd we'd get you on to talk about that, um, which it might not be today because I don't want to do it, uh, you know, an injustice because there's there, there's some interesting conversations to have there. 
Um, and I and and but I, I guess I just had had been kind of been kind of burnt out on it because that's all everyone was talking about. Um, but I understand why. I definitely, like, oh, yeah, es- yeah. especially in the realm of like Bitcoin mining, if you if you t- if you t- take that kind of perspective and put it towards like inf- you know mining the mining all the available information, you know, using you know hardware, um, you know, very quickly. I, you know, there, there's some interesting potentials there, which we'll we'll, we'll get into. Um, I will say for for the for the viewers on Fascist Tube or Odyssey, I threw up the image. Um, uh, Jamin posted an image in uh, one of these simple X chats, uh, which uh, was, I guess, uh, something he put together. Um, and I'll kind of explain it for the benefit of the uh, the podcast listeners. And then Jamie, maybe we, maybe we can start with more of a higher level conversation here of what you're building out. Um, but uh, starts with the mesh router, sure. Um, then up to the ghost router for a guest network. Um, then up to a ghost sentinel, which branches off to you know a couple different a couple different PAS nodes. Um, and also a DMZ switch and a local LAN switch, which the local LAN switch goes over to, the, to a ghost router. Then you have your ISP access device, which then accessing it access, accesses the internet. So um, I guess that that might be just a lot of jargon or mum, you know mumble jumble, for, you know, for for people who aren't you know who aren't working on it every day like you are. So I guess br- break that down for us. You know, what's the what's a vision for this overall architecture? Which I know it's a lot like the ghost system, which is what you're putting together here. But it, I'm sure the vision's coming coming together more. Sure. Um, I mean, this is basically scaled down from what a uh, edge data center would, how an edge data center would be set up. And that's basically what we have to build out are these little micro data centers that offer services that um, can be basically redundant and um, distributed. So the architecture of the system is all centered around a open WRT router slash network security appliance that I'm calling the ghost Sentinel. And it's really like a spe- build spec as much as it is, it is my product. Um, so in the build spec is basically a device that's capable of running open W or I'm sorry, open sense, um, to their recommended specifications or above that is uh, durable and stable and doesn't have any out-of-band ma- management like the management engine to worry about. So after searching pretty much every device in that category that I know exists, I found that there are a couple models of thin client that were, um, these ones were made by HP, that have an AMD processor that doesn't have any out of band management. And they have an expansion card slot that's capable of taking a high quality Intel four channel network interface card. So those things together running open sense basically make an extremely high value system that uh, is based off of corporate surplus that has a huge logistics supply train chain behind it for um, replacement parts and spares and everything else. So, um, so that device basically segments your, your network into four different segments. Um, Being a local segment where you'd have your most private stuff on an ISP segment that is just connected to the ISP a DMZ segment that is basically the only segment that accepts incoming connections from the internet or the WAN and um, a guest network, which is for connecting to other passes and local people that can also be branched out into various mesh networks to extend the range of it. So, um, in the, I'm trying to remember which, like I made, I've been working on the diagrams, so I, I probably have like 10 of them now. So I'm trying to remember which one I shared, but it was probably the one, the basic one with a node on each side, right? A node on the DMZ and then a node on the land. Correct. Yep. And the reason for, so the reason for that is that you would have your, if, if you were trying to do. So if you're trying to simultaneously 
um, replace all the services you use, including on your local devices, and contribute to like a second realm network, you have to have that stuff segmented so that it's not mixed together because it would be right. a security and privacy nightmare. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So basically, this is the industry standard on how you would do this for the least amount of resources. But still, I mean, it's like open sense is state of the art as far as what it does. Um, and the hardware is over spec to be able to run it. It's more than what it needs. So it can do all the VPN encryption and it can do um, like it has the, the correct instru acceleration instructions for the to do open VPN without much CPU involvement. It can do um, you can even do deep packet inspection. Like it can do all these advanced security functions if you set it up to do so. Like there's enough hardware there to do it. So, um, and it differs from the ghost router in that the ghost router, while it can function as a internet gateway for higher security than your ISP's device that you get, um, it doesn't have the horsepower to run all the intrusion detection and all the advanced stuff that the um, uh, terminal-based ones, the modified terminals have. So it's basically, and also there, there are some things with how the segmentation is done on a consumer router. Like instead of those ports actually being separate, like physical ethernet devices, they're all one switch and there are different virtual like um, addresses it can use for the, for what you, for the address you're connecting to and the address that you're like, internet service connects to like that side of it but those aren't separate cards and th those aren't separate chips right those are divided by um logical segmentation instead of physical segmentation so there's like like this is this ups the you know it ups the security from that because this is complete physical segmentation on each of the interfaces versus just logical on a consumer router and it right. also makes it like so, like when when I was doing multi WAN for this new setup that I have because I kept my DSL as backup, so I have um, Verizon and Starlink in a load balanced failover setup. Um, the it was just much more difficult to get it to work it get it to work using the uh, consumer router with DDWRT than um, OpenSense. Open sense, like um, it's a key feature. So, like, there's you can connect so many different services at the same time, and there's different rules for distributing load amongst them and everything. It's another league. So, yeah. um, so, so I guess so just I, real so quick, if I, if, I, if, I, if I could jump in real, real quick. Um, so it sounds like the Ghost Sentinel is kind of the backbone to the entire the entire thing, and then the, the which oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to get verification on that and then the, the second thing is um and for you know for the nomad or you know for folks who don't have this this sort of you know room for for infrastructure or something um we're also talking about like it, it may only be for like a dozen people listening right now that want to you know have uh Pasnia data centers whoever the hell you want to call them um so this would be i as i, I imagine because you, you could out i mean yeah you could obviously outsource outsource that stuff too um to a trusted Pasnia, which is a lot better than uh, you know, a tr uh, you know, an untrusted third party that is definitely going to sell your information. So, um, it's uh, yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's definitely it a step forward. forward. Yeah, but go ahead, go ahead, Jamin. Um, and I'm going to be working on mobile systems too. Like these, I have a prototype that's a. It's almost high availability high availability at this point i haven't gotten all the functions working yet but it's a three system cluster that are, is based on laptops hmm. that is uh basically the core of my system here at this point um and i'm also examining some other mobile options for more mobile data centers like one one way someone could go if they wanted to offer some something like this mobile 
is that each one of the devices on the on the system could be could be replaced with something that's more power efficient. Now the Ghost Sentinel is very power efficient for being what it is and being made to be plugged into AC mains power, but if there are higher budget systems that are made to be they're like ruggedized industrial systems that open sense can be installed on for extremely power efficient use cases. So um, this basic structure that I'm presenting can be also mobilized and mobilized with something like a Calyx access point, which is yes. like unlimited. Yep. Um, like you could put these anywhere with a, with a uh, small solar set up. Yeah, with the Calyx hotspot. So yeah. I mean, this whole system can it's be crazy, and and that's amazing yeah. that that you're you're rigging this up for mobile too. Because I I said that, and as soon as I said it, like yeah, for 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 most nomads, yeah, they might not be interested in something like this. But for um, we talked about sneaker nets with uh, Brian Sovereign, which is basically um, I guess the the low tech way of data transfer. Um, so yeah, if this, so yeah, if something like this is more possible, is actually possible. Um, that's yeah, that's has even more utility than just a you know low tech sneaker net. So. Um, yeah, this is this is good, man. This is really good. No, for sure. One of the things I'm that's kind of on on my plate to lab up is a Kubernetes cluster made out of um, single board computers. A Kubernetes cluster is a type of cluster for running containerized applications that um, it's almost transparent that you're running on a cluster, like you run the applications and if you need more compute power, you just add systems. Like it's not a lot of management of like where they're, what system they're running on and everything else. It's made for high availability and like it's how a lot of cloud services are run at this point. But I've seen people make different single board computer clusters and there's even a channel that made a mobile server that would fit this use case out of single board computers running Kubernetes that was successful at it. So, I mean, that's another thing down the road. I and mean, it would be like extreme power efficiency would be the point of it all. Not, because like otherwise, these mini PCs that I'm working with, they're much better than single board computers. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's uh, that sounds like some incredible progress uh, since last time we chatted. So um, that's that's all great to hear. Which I, I know a lot of the stuff will integrate, integrate more with. Uh, we'll talk about today, but um, I guess uh, let's go ahead and move forward here um, to the the a couple of the yeah the, the newer um, I guess the newer updates. And uh, the first one is that we've offered the uh, speaking of Calyx, we've offered the um, Ghost Phone with Calyx operating system on it for. Oh, what a year and a half or two years now. Um, gotten a lot of those out. Um, we we were doing a lot of international ones too, so you know those are going all over the world. Um, but uh, um, we just uh, just released, I guess, just put up on the LUA Publications site. Jamin could always do it, but um, we have the uh, advanced Ghost Phone with Graphene, um, the Graphene operating system, which has been a very popular. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 been uh, one of the more popular asks if if we could offer it. And the answer is obviously, yeah, it's not. I mean, I, I don't I do not do this stuff, but um, for as far as you know, like your efforts, Jamin, it's basically, you know, loading, you know, loading one operating system versus another. So it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I guess um, I, I, I will say that um, for for folks more like me, um, Calyx OS seems to be a little more user friendly. Um, there were a couple of that I've had issues um, using Simple X on Graphene. Um, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but like if you're looking for like a daily use phone, um, you know, we're and just just as you know in this diagram, we're talking about you know multiple devices. Um, the same might need to be um the case for you know your 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 uh your phone stack. You might have a white phone and a, and a black phone, as I've talked about in other podcasts. But uh, um, yeah, we do offer the um the advanced ghost phone with graphene. Um, let me see if there's anything anything else I was gonna note before turning it over to you i don't i don't know if there's really anything special um anything special you do with the graphene versus the calyx ones but there's st there's still the same google pixel 4 rays right at least for right now yeah i mean um that's what i have it on this batch when i go to replenish these ones it's uh, if there is a newer pixel that's that i get for a better deal i'll upgrade to the newer one but 
budgetary reasons, it's probably going to be 4A. Now, I can do custom higher-end phones, but for, to me, to have the device is supposed to be a minimalistic thing to begin with, and I don't understand. Like, for my use case, I don't know what I would run on it that I would need more hardware than a Pixel 4. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but there are other people true. that are into that, so. So, whatever you want, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I had this later on in my outline. Um, I get, you know, every once in a while, or probably more often than just once in a while, every, you know, every once in a while, but people who want to reach out to you, Jamin, for um, either, you know, they have a, a question, a technical question about something, or they've got you a question about a ghost phone or the hardware, um, if or maybe they want to have a, a custom ghost pad, you know, put to, uh, built or a, a custom ghost phone. Um, where's the best place for people to reach you? Um, for stuff like that, email is a good contact and it would be, um, oh, I, I have to get my ghost, ghost pad email address here. Um, let's see, just having one of those. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, see, I well, just you're... did this system and it's oh, yeah. normally right in. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we can splice it. I'll yeah. find it by the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I was gonna say well, we're, well, we're, uh, yeah. well, we're, uh, well, we're, well, um, we're waiting here. I've got the um, well. I was showing the ghost phone. I've got the ghost pads and privacy tools section on the or the category on the LA Publications site pulled up. Um, so yeah, there's a number of different a number of different Vani pads, which I, I guess that I dubbed them. They're just ghost pads. Um, but yeah, a few Sweet. different types, a few different types of ghost pads. Um, Vani Ghost System Bundle, which would be yeah, go, uh, you know, basic ghost pad, um, the Calix ghost phone, and a Faraday bag. And then, um, yeah, uh, various variations. And then, uh, yeah, the newest one, the Advanced Ghost Phone. Um, the 4As with graphene, which, yeah, very popular. I understand why. I certainly, certainly do. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, that's what I need to check. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, what I needed to check is if it was because they change things. Well, damn you. <laughs> damn your caps could go. So, okay, it is .NET. It was before they made the change. Okay, it's info.ghostpad.net. Info.ghostpad.net. Um, okay. At, okay. At, um, mm -hmm. at proton dot, protonmail.com. Yeah, it was when they still had .com. Okay. All right, I haven't used it for a minute, dude. Okay. Very good. Well, I will put that in the show notes too. So, uh, yeah, any anyone who uh, wants to reach out yeah. to Jamin, you've got an email address for him now. Um, so that is that is great. Um, Info dot okay. Cool. And I guess just one one uh, one one basic question um, regarding these um, are are the batteries replaceable in the four? And I, so I guess I'll ask for both three the three I guess the three A's and the four A's um, are the batteries replaceable. No, I no. mean most, Google most stopped making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to find battery replaceability in a phone, but um, you can get set up. Like I could get set up to do it at some point. It's you can do it. It's just you need like one of the hot plate deals to take the phone apart, and it's way more it's of a major easy. operation. Yeah. It's not just taking just out four screws. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, making it more yep. making more difficult for the average person to do basic shit like change a goddamn battery. Okay, I won't rant, um, but yes. Um, oh, I hate it. <laughs> it's he ridiculous. Hates it. It's ridiculous. Um, but I guess uh, like I I heard um, wasn't it or I don't know. I I guess I heard. I'm gonna I'm gonna go there um, for the sake of time. Uh, the second big the second big update is this Pasnia this Pasnia Jitsi server that we're talking on right now. Uh, and I guess, uh, and maybe you've, I think we've, I think you've kind of mentioned something to start this conversation on signal or something like that, or it was on your mind, I think. Um, but there is a, a, an interesting proxy immersion idea here and it's, you know, it's a, it's a, obviously it's not one to get rich off. It's a cheap one, but, um, it might be a really valuable service and that's the, the, I guess the more of the, more of the focus of it. But, um, so just imagine, I guess the, the, the way that it's set up now, there's only so many, um, what it, there's only so many participants get that, or I don't know how how it is, but there there's a limit on how much um, at this point um, for this for this Jitsi integration that we're using. 
L at some point might be might actually be self hosted, but um, what do you think, Jamin, about some proxy merchant idea where someone hops on? I don't know what the how it would actually work out, software hardware wise. Um, but uh, someone pays a few dollars in Bitcoin or Monero, they get a custom link emailed to them um, using the domain that I'm not going to publicize right now. Um, and the meeting can be as long as it, the, the length of the meeting doesn't matter. So if you have it after like a six hour phone call or a twelve hour seminar or whatever the whatever the hell it is, it doesn't matter. Um, it's more about the connection, how many, how many connections between participants or something like that. It's a, it's weird the way it's set up, but, um, so to, to add on to that, a security culture minded flow for someone like if, if you needed to use like a passing a Jitsi server, like a passing a Jitsi server, um, in a time of, of desperate need where we need extreme privacy or just extreme paranoia, that's okay too. We've all been there. Um, but, uh, so meeting participants generate anonymous emails with something like simple login, um, or you could just create a new email for this purpose entirely, uh, sign up and pay with Bitcoin and Monero at the website link, um, which so we'll disclose later, not going to do right, do it right now. Um, you'll have the meeting link emailed to you, um, emailed to you both within five to 10 minutes, after the participants in the conversation, or I could just, or it can just go to one person. They can distribute it. However, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's not important at this point, but um, low risk, low cost. So we'll, um, I guess, uh, this would be another, I guess, infrastructure part of it, which wouldn't be difficult, I don't think, but, um, need to run the own, on, on, run, you know, run the own Bitcoin node, um, to be able to accept zero confirmation Bitcoin transactions, um, which you would not want to do generally, but considering, cause it's not, yeah, again, like it's not like, um, it's so low risk. Like if it's a couple few bucks and the transaction fails, it's not that big of a loss, you know? Um, and I don't want to. It, it would it would be better than having to deal with lightning, which I'm about to drop actually on the audio publication site because it's just it's it hasn't gone any further. It hasn't gone that much further, um, and it's just kind of a pain now. And it's getting expensive using voltage, so I'm gonna probably stop that. But uh, anyway, I guess um, what do you think about that, Jamin? As, as far as like a proxy merchant idea using you know passing passing a Jitsi, Jitsi server, um, you know e whether it's for a high profile you know like a high security need situation where you take all those advanced privacy steps, or if it's just like uh, you need uh, instead of self hosting everything yourself and figuring that out, which I didn't and I, I didn't and I couldn't, so I had you do it. Um, if you don't want to deal with that, then you can just, yeah, you know, whether, yeah, whether it's a private thing or just like a seminar or whatever it may be. But what, what do you think about that, Jamin? Um, logistically, practically all that. Oh, I think that's way doable. Um, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a good idea to pay the bills on the infrastructure. Um, and like be, you know, in this instance, you could move up to a, a larger droplet or whatever if you needed more capacity. So it's not, um, it's not something that you can really lose out on your end. You're, if you're not using it for a cast, it's has, it's just there, just right? There, right? Yeah. So yeah. might as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like subletting an apartment. You know what I mean? Yes. If you're yeah, not going to be there and. That's that's true, and and I guess the the other the other part of this too is because um, the the reason that this happens so quickly, and I guess I'm I'm always thankful for these for these for these nudges, even though they're pain in the ass, you know, they're pain you know pains in the ass whenever they happen, um, especially when you're trying to do a podcast for the first time in a few months, and Jitsi's like, hey, log into Google or GitHub, and it's like, uh, I guess I will this time, or actually no, I didn't that mm -hmm. time, I just used Zoom, which is worse, so. Um, thinking about podcasters too, who want to uh, you know take their you know their their podcasting into their own hands, and you can record the Jitsi too. Apparently, uh, apparently people have have had issues with that, but I I just prefer to record through OBS, um, at this point, and it's the FLV file yeah. because if it's if it's MP4 and it crashes while you're recording, you can't recover it. But if you if it's an FLV, or I think it's, or whatever the oh. whatever the other file format is, whatever the whatever the one that, that OBS is defaulted in, um, it does it sequentially, so it it just cuts off at that point um, versus MP4. So I switched that. Oh, cool. So I don't, I don't don't have issues issues there. But um, I always I always prefer recording um, via OBS versus versus Jitsi. I've never actually really tried it, but um, yeah, it's uh it's 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 pretty neat. Um it's pretty neat. And I know there was um so the the Hackers Congress in 2018 um when um I got a a chance to be a guest on their digital, you know, their dig digital version of that. Um they they had their own self-hosted, you know, instance of it or or whatever. I don't know what all what all of the functionality is with with this. We'll have to test it out, but um, the most exciting thing, and again, I'm not going to mention the link because I, we don't need it to be spammed or anything. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, the the custom link for like the 
it used to be like meet.jitsy dot com forward slash funny podcast you know three 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 or whatever it was and now the link is like the link's a lot better so it's kind of a it's just kind of a preferential thing but like it's 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 one of those things it's like it's like the ghost phone oh yeah that's it's, great. It's, it's, it's like the ghost phone or the ghost pad when you actually own your shit or you're getting closer in that direction like there is there is actually like a yeah you take notice i guess you can say that's cool oh for sure but uh yeah, enough about that. Um, I guess uh, well, the I guess the the last thing I'll mention there is um, if if anyone has any feedback on the Paznia Jetsy server idea, um, the Telegram committee correspondence is open. Simple X, Signal, wherever. Um, coordinator at Paznia dot com, send feedback. Uh, or if you're interested in, uh, sounds like somebody you're interested in. Yeah, let us know. Now next, uh, and this will be mostly you, Jamin, because I don't know much about it. Actually, I I mean I've heard the name of it. Um, but I didn't know what it's, I, I knew it was a cloud service, but there are a million of those today and I've never looked into it. So I'm not familiar with it. Um, next cloud, um, seems like it could take care of, we're talking about Jitsi. Uh, there's a Jitsi integration. Um, we've talked about IPFS a lot on this channel. There's an IPFS integration. It does maps. It does a lot of, a lot of stuff. I won't go through all of it. I'll let you explain it better, but, um, yeah, next cloud seems to fit. Um, a lot of the infrastructure challenges that we face as a, a parallel network. So I guess could could you give us an overview of Nextcloud and and kind of a rundown on on how it could be used for um, you know for the Pazzi network? Sure. Um, Nextcloud is a modular cloud replacement um, application that is made to be meant to be self-hosted. Um, it basically is a fork of another very, very similar use case application called OwnCloud. And from what I understand, they forked because NextCloud is more community driven and they it has a lot of, uh, it's more idealistic and OwnCloud is more um, catering to corporate interests more from what I've gathered. Um, but, uh, it also doesn't have all the integrations that you can get through Nextcloud. It only has a handful. It's basically um, geared towards integration with the Microsoft ecosystem more than anything else, it seems. So Nextcloud is a more um, focused at integrating free and open source systems. So at its core, it has a hub that has a application called Files. And that application basically replaces your cloud drive type service and um, gives you a bunch of file sharing options. And it's federated so you can basically choose other Nextcloud users that you want to share files with or groups of users that you predefine. And there is really fine-grained control over who sees what and um, what you allow to share with other people or the, or the internet as a whole if you have any public access shares on your system. Um, so it's basically the core application that can integrate all the other services that a second realm network needs. Um, it's application level stuff. And basically it's to, to network a network of networks, it's better to do it on that level with these tools um, re regarding what's available right now. So Nextcloud can be the glue that basically glues the PASMEs together. And it also has a common interface, so you don't have to learn so many interfaces for a lot of other applications that provide the services you want from them. So, I mean, it's a little bit less administration administrative burden. Um, it has a really big following and a lot of the following are people who are doing it for autonomy reasons and privacy and security um so i mean this community fits right in with that community on that level 
So um now I I, yeah, I will I will say they they have they have some cringy corporate videos as Jitsi does too. So I'm like I I I, I talk shit about that a little bit to Jitsi. Um but there were some cringe I I, I only got before because I all my preparation, I got through about two minutes of like one of their like one of their big formal presentations. Like the, I guess they've got a you know corporation or something. But as you said, like they 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 all were they all were all in alignment. But it was just very cringy. Um, but you, it's you're gonna oh, yeah, have that. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have that. Um, it's 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 just how it is. If they you know it's it's uh um, well and yeah, there is a commitment to open source and privacy and that, also... that came through for sure. Well, and there's also an esoteric and exoteric layer there. I mean, correct, exactly. That, yep. That that marketing is for the money making part of the operation that yep. they're trying to fund things with, and they're they're paying people that are going to write rhetoric like that to write rhetoric like that because to get the fun, that's yeah, what everybody exactly. else does. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, no, yeah. I get. No, I, I get so, it. Yep, I but get it. Yeah. Their actual community is pretty. Yeah. I mean, especially like the self-hosting community at large, which is getting larger and larger. Like there are a lot of very good YouTube channels explaining how to do all this stuff um, on the infrastructure level and like all the way up to the software level. Um, a, a lot of them are highly motivated by privacy and autonomy. And that's, you know, that's why they aren't using decentralized services. They realize the consequences of that. Right, and at the end of the so, day, they write themselves out of the equation. Like it's it's open source software that's that's audited and vetted, um, and they give you the ability to write them out of the equation. So whatever dumb shit they're doing, if they're doing dumb shit at all, it doesn't really matter to you because the software works the way that it works. It's kind of like Bitcoin in that way. Um, so yeah, that's that's great. Oh yeah, I mean, um, and I've looked at all the alternatives and I really can't find anything that does all the stuff it does. Even like the foundational app without adding add-ons, which um, like the foundational app with the federation that it can do and the, uh, the built in collaborative, even if, even if just, if it's using the most basic part of it and editing markdown files collaboratively, I mean, that really takes care of a lot of the uh, collaborative use cases that I think um, self-liberators would have. And then, like, if you want better versions of those things, you can install, like, some of the other add-ons. Um, being very selective of, you know, how uh, how mature they are and how secure they could or you know yeah yeah so so i guess the um and this was <clears throat> i hear a lot of suggestions on um on a lot of things but this was one of the ones um that really really stood out to me um and it, it's, it's as you were saying um versus doing one different you know using one piece of software for every single thing and then hoping that you can do some api um you know calls to integrate those after the fact is not a good strategy um at all, um, but it sounds like Nextcloud has a Jitsi integration. They've got IPFS integration. Um, they've got uh, Tor hidden service. Um, you know ways to you know put your your sites and stuff between uh, behind Tor hidden services. Uh, Open Street Maps integrations. Um, ebook readers um, for like the Pasni library. Uh, basic local AI, um, which, uh, which you know, I'm sure you, you you've been you've done a lot of uh, testing into. And I think what's most interesting about, um, and, and I, you kind of explained this a little bit uh, earlier, about how you can very finely choose the settings on, you know, what nodes you connect to and, and all. So it seems like from, from what I read, um, there's kind of the circle of trust model for sharing between nodes um, built in. Like, it, it's, it's, well, it's, it's obviously your choice, um, but, but um, I, I guess that w it seems like there could be a circle of trust model um, that could be intentionally implemented um, into next cloud, um, potentially, um, like the, and, and, and scuttlebutt's not scuttlebutt's been around, I guess just using the scuttlebutt model. Um, I don't think scuttlebutt's the future, but I think they've got a great model using the circle of trust. So oh, if next cloud can do that and, you know, we're talking, we're talking about a lot, a lot of different things here. We're talking about, you know, like the map and direct, I guess the, the map, which is the, the big thing, which would be embedded with the directory. So the map and the directory, 
Um, we're talking about, uh, you know, like communications, potentially, you know, digital communications, a, a potential integration of that with Jitsi, which I don't know how, how extensive that goes. We'll have to figure it out. Um, the IPFS integration, which is huge. Um, that's huge. If you could have like the PASD map published on IPFS. Um, like we got, we got to be in these places. Same with Tor Hidden Services. Um, that was something I brought up in um, maybe the generic uh, Department of Technology chat and, and SimpleX. But we've got to have, um, <clears throat> even if it gets like two hits a month, um, I mean, God, I, I don't know how much it costs either, but hopefully nothing. <laughs> but um, to get set up on like the deep web or, um, yeah, Torrent services, something like that. Like that's, that'd be huge. You got to be there. Like that's the, that's the digital second realm. Um, and yeah, it does, it does, it does so much. It does so much. So um, I guess the, um, at this point I will bring up, um, so Matthew Raymer, who um, people will know, um, he'll, 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 he'll come up uh, in the next thing we talk about with, uh, yeah, next thing we talk about. But he brought up a, a couple of points, um, Jamin, which I'd like to just get on the record here for podcast form um, as well for people who may not have, uh, who may not be there. But uh, Matthew said, next cloud is okay, but it's missing some pretty important pieces. Um, should have a calendar, a web dev calendars. Uh, I use its ugly relative open office with mostly success. If you supplement Nextcloud with something like Radical, um, almost have a modern office suite. You should self host Dovecot too. Um, so I could read your response, but I will let you um, just respond since you're here. In the okay. Question. So, yeah, that, those are his only critiques. And uh, I guess, yeah, what do you think? Um, see, I, I agree. If you want more, if you want more integration with, you know, on if you're doing more of a business and you want more integration with other industry standard office type products for um, to do lists and calendaring and scheduling and stuff like that, you you need that. But one thing about Nextcloud is is it already has all kinds of calendaring and and features similar to that built in. So unless you need some integration with some other external app, I don't know if everybody's use case is going to require that. Now I can definitely see. And he, he does um, have a unique use case. If too, you wanted. For sure. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's what I, that's my opinion. I mean, I've in radical is like really not hard to set up. Like, and another thing we've been going back and forth about on the discussion is the utility of freedom box. And that's something that Freedom Box is really good at deploying. So I mean, that could just be a another virtual machine if you're using the hypervisor OS system that I recommend for the uh, different for the server nodes. It's just a matter of firing up another hypervisor and pointing your uh, reverse proxy to it. So or another another virtual machine and pointing your reverse proxy to it. So it's or it's a matter of um, running another Docker container, depending on how your system's set up. Like, I'm going to have multiple options when it comes to the servers and how they're set up. But it's, I mean, it's something that's not a big deal to add if you need it. It's just cool. not something that Nextcloud has. I don't know if Nextcloud has integration of that in itself that's, without adding something extra. That's not really their... It doesn't seem like that's their um, target market, though. Uh, at least, Well, maybe they're switching to that, but they're more about self-hosting, um, it seems like, versus commercial um, at this point. But then again, yeah, yeah it, 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 they may be transition, it, transitioning more well, to, to, towards that realm. Well, it is being used a lot by um, smaller corporate... Cr clouds just because of all the advantages of self-hosting and the privacy and everything like that um a friend of mine basically that's what he does is he configures stuff like that professionally and he told me that it's a big thing and a lot of them are connecting them to other other clouds like aws for like mass storage and stuff like that so, I mean, there's a lot of integrations there. And that's actually good for our use case because a lot of times it's going to make sense to have a VPS in the chain somewhere. Like, especially people start self-hosting their own businesses and stuff. To have a VPS that takes the brunt of 
all the uh, all the traffic, and it's just redirecting what needs to be redirected back to your private infrastructure, and back and forth, is you know it's essential, and especially for like load balancing. And I mean, once you get into higher level than what we're originally starting here, it's going to be important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's, yeah, definitely fair. Definitely fair. Um, so I guess the, the a, a couple questions in terms of like uh, set, it, set up and use. Um, now, again, just like with uh, when we were talking earlier about, um, you know, I guess your setup like where, you know, there might be a, you know, there might be, you know, passing a data servers um, or, you know, PaaS servers or, you know, whatever we're calling them. Um, where it is more, you know, more complex. But as far as like a next cloud, um, I feel like this would be the place where, and, and if it can all be done at once, that's that's amazing. Like that's that's the goal. Um, but where if someone downloads like a next cloud instance, that's our own Pasni next cloud instance for say, um, per se. I, I don't know how this would work. I'm just kind of talking out loud and see if it's possible. But if there's like if, if we can if we can offer our own next cloud instance for download on the Pasni website. And it comes with, um, you know, it comes with like a stock set of, uh, you know, stock set of apps where they'd have access to the Pasnium, the Pasnium map and directory. They'd have access to a Jitsi chat. Um, they'd have access to IPFS. They'd have access to, um, you know, the Pasnia library, which would have, you know, hopefully gigabytes and eventually terabytes of, of, of reading material and such. Um, you know, like... Uh, How's the, the, the I guess, the, the download, the setup, the, the use of NextCloud, um, to, you know, to your experience? And um, would it be possible to offer something like that where, because if we're going to, if, if, if we're going to give, like, if, if the average person is going to use it, it's got to be easy as shit. Even for me, too. Like, I, I don't have a lot of patience for a lot of things now. Um, so, I mean, like, is it possible to make it that easy where we've got our own, our, our own PASNI and xCloud instance where, you know, they download it and it already kind of, you know, minimal setup or very easy setup, like, I guess, what are your, what are your thoughts? What, what's your experience? Um, I'm actually in the process of making something like that. It'll be a USB flash disc or USB flash drive that, um, you can either run off the flash drive or install it onto the system, and it'll be a pre-setup instance in Nextcloud on top of whatever. It's probably going to be um, my prototype is going to be based off of MX Linux, and MX is a like Debian-based system for, that is made to be remastered and put on flash drives for this type of use case. So um, that's it's in the works here. And the thing is with Nextcloud is there are so many ways to install it. Um, the I've been thinking a lot about the lowest barrier, you know, the lowest bar, lowest barrier of entry device that I could offer for people to get on the network. And um, I have a prototype that I could build out at this point that is um, extremely efficient and it's running on what's called um, Diet Pi, which is a really lightweight Debian distribution for single board computers primarily that has installation scripts that will install all kinds of software with a, you know, the quote unquote single click install. But um, it's, it works really well and it's, um, very lean and it runs well on these systems and I can sell them for like 75 bucks and still be worth my time. So that would be like the lowest bar. Um, and then a higher bar than that might be a, a, a surplus laptop you have laying around. But the problem is um, with a lot of consumer consumer hardware that people are going to have laying around it's probably laying around because it doesn't work really good. Um, yeah, probably. Like a lot of consumer... Yeah, and um, with consumer laptops, they have issues running as servers 24-7. Like they're just not made for that. Now you can find laptops to do it, and you can find like the old ThinkPads that the ghost pads are made out of can definitely 
do that. My first prototypes. Were That's based exactly on where my mind is at. I, I do have a ghost pad laying around that I've, I've been. It was either going to have start nine put on it or something else, and it seems like it might be something else. Um, so yeah, yeah, and, and I don't um, like uh, like we could totally use start nine for things too. Um, I haven't had much success in um, getting it set up in my lab at this point. The latest installer, there, there is some issue that I've been able to replicate on the virtual machine install and on a bare metal install. So I know it's um, now the only I still have some more steps in the troubleshooting process to make sure it's not on my end, but um, I haven't been able to check it out yet. Um, sure, and, and I'll mention yeah, I mean, that. Um, so, so Dave, Dave, from, Dave from Start Nine, he was at Bonnie Fest this year. And we we talked, you know, we 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 had, you know, uh, he was here only here for a day or whatever, but we had a lot of good conversations. And um, even though, like, as far as right now, um, and this is, you know, I, I've I've you've got to give you've got to give like open source projects and stuff and like these things to come together. It, it takes time, um, but like we're at a point now, like it's it's like three years into the Pasnia. Uh, you know, passing at network and we got to get, we got to get a map put together. Um, and it's not only focus, it's not only, don't, doesn't only hinge on the technological part. Um, it also hinges on, um, you know, folks getting involved, passing.com forward slash join. If you've got a homestead or something like that, someplace you want to add to the network for people to visit or, uh, or to, you know, um, check out or passing.com forward slash join too. Um, if you're a nomad or just someone who wants to gain access to the network or if you've got something to offer, um, let us know. Um, that's the, the other, the other part of it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really like what, what's available right now. And in terms of long-term vision, um, start nine is on like philosophically, ideologically we're on, we're on point. Um, but the few, there were a few folks that tried you included to, you know, to work with start nine in the past month or so. And it, it doesn't seem like it might be, you know, ready for, you know, ready for, uh, ready for battle yet, I guess. I don't, I don't know how else to put it, but, um, and this shit's hard. This shit's hard. Um, yeah, definitely. It's why it's taken so long to get to this point at all. Um, that's why it's it's great to see that there's well, been yeah, so, there's, I, there's been so much progress in just the past you know month or two. Um, so yeah, it's it's great. But yeah, go ahead, Jamin. Well, I mean, as far as getting as far as they have, they've gotten farther than I have as far on that type of project. I've been trying to do the single board computer multi-application home server thing for a while too and so i know how difficult it is and i know how easy it is for something really dumb to break everything yeah and then like it's not back easy. to the drawing board so yeah prop, yeah props to those guys oh yeah and and, there, and there's def, there's definitely still use um it's just for for these specific purposes um maybe something else but um at, at this at this moment in time um but yeah, there, there. It's and, and and I guess I'll I'll refer well, I'll refer people to the the pa the last passing of Realm assembly in like February of this year I think it was maybe, um, where Dave talked a lot about what their future their future vision is, um, as far as um like the, and that they're the same same perspective as we have. There's you know the there's the first first realm internet and there's second realm internet, and for a time there's going to be needs to you know have our pirate connections between the two. And they're working on a lot of those things. So, like, they're on fucking point with their vision and everything they're doing. But, again, this shit's really effing hard. And I, I've tried a few projects myself like this. Dark Lance we'll talk about next. Um, for this, like, it takes a lot of time just, like, you know, putting together the ideas. Um, you know, getting people together and, you know, talking about it, fleshing it out, seeing what, especially in the open source realm, why reinvent the wheel if something already exists. So, like, there was probably a year or so for that for one of those projects where it was just trying to find out what's out there because um, every single week there were like two or three more th new things to look into that might be you know good fits so it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy world and it's to i guess i i don't know it's in in, in one sense it's it's frustrating that it has to be this way like it should be a lot fucking easier but um you know then again I guess maybe maybe the challenge is part part of the is part of the fun. I don't know. <laughs> oh, definitely, it wouldn't be as interesting if it was easy. No, that's true. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So yeah, it seems um, like seems like next cloud's where it's at. Um, and 
Yeah, and it's lots of ins- lo- lots of lots of installation ways. You're going to offer a a uh, an easy way for people to get in, low low cost entry. Yeah. Um. So so I guess just like to again, it's and I don't like like Vanu is not the realm where you where you necessarily put like. Vanu is years for the making. That's the the quote, right? So like one, two, three, four step tutorials aren't like necessarily Vanu, but um, I make exception for cases like these. Um, so like if people get those devices um, for seventy five bucks, what will it take for them to like? How easy will it be for them to get connected? Um, like uh, like again, just to, to to you're already working on it. Like a, um, like a Jitsi chat integration, IPFS integration. Um, the op the I guess the PAS name app and directory could people just like with you know plugging in that flash drive have access, have access to all of that um, I guess and, and that's just you know a perfect world crazy question to ask a developer you know a developer hacker or something like that but um, <laughs> we'll go for it perfect world oh yeah it's it's possible f- to do something like that but the thing is if we have just one generic install out there that has access to all that stuff it's not going to be very secure secure private yeah so Uh, so we have to straddle the usability line there and look at what our actual um you know what is the threat assessment of our use case like threat model the whole thing and um what we'll probably want to do is have a next cloud install that is um, at least semi-custom per user and have a way for each user to um, kind of take ownership of their install if it's a mass install. So, yeah, I mean, long story short, we can do it, but it's like we got to consider those elements to it. So, so I guess, yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. Um, I guess just, um, what I, what I pictured in my mind initially, because obviously vetted Pasnians, um, stakeholders who, you know, they've, you know, paid money for to the network and all, you know, second realm. Um, so I guess first off, um, yeah, a lot of those security culture considerations are huge considerations, um, which is why I'm putting them off. Um, so the first step is for like vetted Pasnians. So I guess in, in this sense, um, like a, a first batch or, you know, first, second batch of, 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 of these devices would go to vetted Pasnians. And that would be, that would be one way to kind of, to kind of skirt around at least initially and, you know, get more of these into the hands of folks. And that also helps with the, I guess, if we have a, pub, a so-called public rollout, um, because there's going to be a public Pasnia map, um, and directory. So, um, and those, so yeah, those, those, some of those security, cons- security culture considerations won't be, won't be, won't be applicable. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're definitely right. Um, yeah, good point. Well, I mean, that's just why it wouldn't be good for me to make an install and sure. just image that install out ad infinitum because all, they're all going to have the same SSH encryption keys and like they're all going, yeah. you know what I mean? There's yeah. just, uh, we, yeah, we need hard. to, and it's really just as simple as a script, right? It's the same thing you do to a VM when you make it into a template. Like I, it's just another step that we got to do is all. Gotcha. So easily, easily, uh, easily overcome. Um, well, that's good. I guess, um, in terms of next cloud, is there, is, is there anything else you, you, you'd want to mention? And, and, and I'll preface that, um, with a, there is a, a plan, uh, it's, it's, I guess it's, it's, it's been mentioned and, um, hopefully it'll happen next month or two, but it actually, you know, second round, second, uh, Pasnia, second round assembly talking about these things, um, open conversation with Pasnians. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess Jamin, from your, from your, from your point of view, um, anything else you'd like to mention on, on next cloud? Uh, do you have any experience with, with, uh, JITS or IPFS integrations or, uh, any knowledge on that, or I guess anything else you can tell us? Uh, before we we move forward here. Well, okay. Uh, besides Jitsi integrations, Nextcloud actually actually has a um, voice communication talk function too that is um, suitable. It's encrypted and everything. Um, I've never messed with the Jitsi integration yet, but I will soon. Um, another thing with Next cloud, as far as uh, the systems are concerned, is that the network is going to need the resources to run some of the larger things, 
like the minimum requirements for a um, open street map based server is going to be the same to host the map so we're going to need at least one node if not more that has enough storage resources for that and what was that like a terabyte or something so we'll need a node that's that can do that on the network um, but as far as setting up the more client device next clouds, if someone isn't going to be able to have that much storage to host that thing that much, because really a lot of the expense of these systems come from um, the mass storage. Right. So, I mean, these boxes that I'm selling and building, you can basically use the USB 3 port to add an external storage device and have is you know as much as much storage as your external storage device has available um so like getting a node on the network that has that much storage is as simple as plugging in a couple terabyte external drive or whatever to one of them so i mean um we'll ha there'll have to be considerations to that though and it would it would be good to have some nodes on the network that are doing that that are beefier than the entry-level single board computers the entry-level single board computers are enough to have like a personal next cloud instance and give you the connectivity but you're not going to install um like the whole plugin stack on it and do all the stuff all the locally processed stuff on um, a little quad core arm, arm computer. You know what I mean? Like you'll need, if you want to run the whole stack on a single node, you're going to need something with more horsepower. And the next step up from that is a micro desktop, um, which hardware wise, there are somewhere between a laptop and a small form factor desktop PC. And, um, the key advantage of them is not only that they have the processor power to do the whole stack, they have the ability to have redundant storage internally so that um, there's some fault tolerance and um, higher availability added to the equation. So that would be like the next step up, um, at least with the systems that I'm specking out to be optimal. Um, it, and it's about as powerful as the laptop nodes that I run. But the, the uh, I'm basing the laptop nodes out of uh, ghost stations. So they have enough internal storage to do a uh, ZFS RAID 5 with three drives, which is much faster and much better for data integrity than the simple mirrored storage that I can do on the ones that only accept two devices. So, I mean, like as you go up in size and price, it's really because they have more IO and storage options. Um, but pretty much any um, mini PC that's bought surplus, um, like the generations I started making them in the one liter size are all good enough to do what we're doing with them. So it's not even like you're not going to find one that's too old even. Like they're all at least fourth generation Intel platform. So yeah. Um, okay. Except, except for some weird Lenovo's that are like really slow AMDs, but just don't get those ones. <laughs> I'm going to have a whole guide. I'm using AI to make a guide. So um, I'm basically, my workflow is basically taking an outline of my notes and having a conversation with an AI about, about it and um, then summarizing that into some um, documentation. So the documentation is getting um, pretty thorough. Like I have a whole, like, you know, introduction to Linux course that I'm working on that'll go along with it as well. At some nice point, um, I have, I have a wiki, I have a wiki, but it's, it's private at this point, 
but when I get to a certain point, I'll open it up to some collaborators. Right on. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's uh, that's that's great to hear. Uh, I suppose uh, we we've, we've been going for about an hour and eleven minutes so far, um, and uh, we'll move forward from next cloud here to the the next um, item on. Uh, for tonight, which is the Pasadena Department of Commerce, uh, Sec Realm Help Wanted or Classified Ads. Now, <clears throat> for yeah, long-term followers of my work or anything, you're familiar with Darklands, uh, which was Matthew Rammer and I's, uh, along with some other collaborators at, at various times, <clears throat> to uh, make a privacy-focused freelancing marketplace focused on Bitcoin. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had a much bigger vision there, um, back in 2017, 2018, um, for, for Darklands. Um, but it could be so much easier now, and it is so much easier. Um, but anyway, uh, this was brought up by uh, by Scratch, a, uh, a new colleague, I, I suppose you could say. But, um, yeah, it's another way to, to – another another way or another opportunity to give folks, you know, a way out of, out of, the, uh, out of the first realm. Because um, that, that's the, the name of the game. It's, uh, you know, like when we get the Pazian map and directly put together – and, uh, you know, van nomads, um, anyone can, you know, see a map and put together a route. Um, you know, we all got stuff to trade. Um, I think there, it's, it's, it's one, one of the, one of the biggest things, um, uh, one of the biggest things is, is, is how do you get out of the first realm? So, um, yeah, I suppose for, for, for this, the, the very, not a whole lot of thought out vision for it, but, um, I mean, you know what Craigslist looks like, obviously, and, and that sort of open source formats out there. Um, but just something like a, uh, yeah, classified help wanted services offered, um, very basic type thing. And, and there really, really, really doesn't have to be even that much vetting on that sort of platform. But, um, I think this would, this would be something else if possible. I mean, like, so like freedom box and, and other platforms like that should offer something basic. Um, like it's, it's, I, I, my vision is very basic for this part of it. So maybe Nextcloud has something for that too, but, um, yeah, I guess initial ideas, just just overall, um, and then implementation, logistics, um, how it could happen. What do you think? Well, I think you know, looking at this from kind of a bird's eye view of the whole network of networks, that stuff like that should be separate from Nextcloud because they are a, like you said, there's less vetting that's needed and. They're not as privileged of things, and it actually benefits to have a wider audience to a you know job board yeah. or you know for sale board or whatever. This is one of those it's public benefits yeah. everybody. Yeah, so like for the more public facing stuff, that can still be self hosted even on the same you know DMZ part of the network. I mean that could be just the addition of a second mini micro PC node or a second single board computer node that just does that. That's all it does. It does the thing that's public and that basically segments all that public traffic away from your um, community but not you, you, like with Nextcloud like I was saying in the beginning like a lot of people might want to run their own private, private Nextcloud on their private part of their LAN for their like because there's personal finance integration and all kinds of stuff like once you start looking at all the stuff it can do you might want to be able to do a bunch of that stuff and not worry about setting the permissions properly on things or you know what i mean just being having something that is uh on your private side of the land for security reasons mm -hmm. so um like i i I foresee a bunch of use cases like that because that's what I'm doing. Like right now I have a next cloud instance on my land side. I have a next cloud instance on my WAN side on the DMZ. And I have a next cloud instance on a digital ocean droplet. And I can segment my activity and the stuff I need and um, my projects through all three of them and the next cloud cloud desktop app basically integrates them all for me and i just have a directory for each one so it's like 
um, it all integrates into one system really easily with Nextcloud too, as I guess is my point. Even like multi-cloud and hybrid cloud deployments. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> right on, right on. So, um, well, yeah, that's, that's good to hear. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're definitely right. That's, uh, that'd be very minimal on the, the information too. You'd basically be basically just be talking about like text and maybe an image or, you know, some images <clears throat> for something like that. So it wouldn't take much. Yeah. And I'm sure in the, in the realm of storage. Yeah. I, um, I've seen open source projects to do just that. I oh, yeah. just can't think of them off the top of my head. You know, looking at through those lists of uh, alternatives to. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and and similarly, and we we might we we won't talk about this necessarily this this evening because that, that was uh, someone else I was looking into it in the Simple X. But um, same thing with the the Pasadena Department of Transportation Logistics and Transportation application um, that will be coming at some point. Um, same sort of thing. There's open, you know. There's applications to copy, you know, or just to, you know, to, to fork and and go from there. Um, so yeah, yeah what's, it's, it's good. What's interesting with uh, talking about Nextcloud and that it not only does does it have the uh, maps integration with the Nextcloud maps application, it has that other OpenStreetMap integration app, and if uh, I think they're there's one or two other ones for editing um, the uh, the route. I forget what the route files are called. But there's um, all kinds of opportunity there for, you know, the backbone of, like, ride sharing as far as the mapping and all that goes, you know? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and it's literally just the, yeah, the, the backbone's all that's needed. Um, there was one Pazian that came a couple of years ago and he does a lot of, I guess, uh, he's like, I guess a freelance trucker and on his phone, he's got this app. It basically shows the available jobs, all the information and you, you know, hit accept, you get all the information. It's all automated. And you, like you're saying, you find something like that, that you can fork or something like that. And, and you're, you're set. Um, and it, it, all this stuff exists. That, that's the hardest part is like, like in the open source world, um, it's not so much about like, you know, sitting down and writing code. It's like what code is already out there that, um, you know, we can just go ahead and integrate. Um, someone's already done, you know, oh, yeah. gracious work for. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's great. Um, I guess the, um, we, we could dive into AI, but I, I think we'll just save that, save that till next time. Um, oh next time until we have you on so yeah for for, for the audience uh, we will have a, a another passing sec realm assembly a meeting of uh, the department of technology uh sometime in the next month or two um hopefully we'll we'll see how the, the timing timing on that works out but um really it seems like next clouds uh um very very um you know seems like folks are excited everyone else is excited about it like i am so that's good. To, good to see. And uh, hopefully, at that point, we will actually get some uh, some direction on implementation and logistics. And, and the first part of that being the, the Pasnia map. So, um, yeah, you know, there's all sorts of integrations. We just got to go one at a time. Um, and yeah, that map is important. Um, it definitely is. So. Um, Jamin, anything else uh, that you'd like to mention before I let you go, before we, uh, I guess, reconvene with, um, I don't know if it's like the last second on assembly, there might be, you know, 15, 20 people there. So, um, you know, I, I think this, this, it, it, it gets my, so th this conversation helps get, get, gets my mind in the right, and thinking in the right direction. And, um, yeah, hopefully you're, you're available for whenever that's scheduled. And, um, we've already, we've already, you know, laid the groundwork and oh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully Pazdians will appreciate it. And, and, and we've, uh, you know, we've gotten them running and they'll bring forth even more, even better ideas and more ideas. So. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I would get into the, the weeds on the AI stuff, but like you said, there's not enough, yeah, wait. not enough time in this one. <laughs> well, we'll give that another hour and a half or two hours on its own. Um, for sure. So, oh, it totally deserves it. It's yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it does. It does. And, 
yeah, don't want to don't want to um, do it injustice. Um, there's a reason it's it's being talked about a lot. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, Jamin, um, I guess uh, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm not going to ask you to recount it again. But for the, for the sake of the audience, if you got a, if you've got uh, you, you've got a custom ghost phone you want, custom ghost pad, or I'm sure he'd even help, he'd even consult with you on um, a home network setup or something like that. Um, I'm not even going to try to recall it myself, but just check the show notes for Jamin's email address, uh, the most uh, up to date one, um, and uh, <laughs> he will be happy to help. I'm not even going to try. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's, uh, yeah, always great. I'm happy we got the, uh, you know, the, the graphene ghost phone out. Um, that was in high demand. Um, I guess just one question that, that comes to mind for international shipping. There was some, something regarding a battery that, that's, uh, kind of, I guess, next possibilities for international ghost phone and ghost patch shipping. But, uh, I guess, is there any, any update on that for our, uh, I don't know, our German or Australian folks or whoever else might be listening? Yeah, I don't really know what to do about that. Um, with the international stuff, they open it and check if they want to. So it's like, I don't know. And, and I haven't really found a good solution around it. Um, but I also haven't put a lot of effort into it because I've been really, really busy doing other things. So sure. um, I'll have to look more into it at some point. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's to the point where um, you're not even supposed to ship any lithium batteries, even in laptops and phones now, priority mail. Um, and then there's all kinds of, all the other carriers have weird things about anything that goes in air mail with any type of lithium battery now. And I have just not had the, uh, the ambition to do enough research to figure out any loopholes or better ways to do it. Sure. Sure. I, so I suppose the alternative then, and it's probably the best alternative. Um, but again, like outs being able to outsource things to people you can trust, like you, Jamin. Like I wouldn't outsource my phone to anybody, but I've got you, so it's it's great. I can I can do that. Um, but you know, even um, but if someone can't, you know, if they're if they're out, you know, out out somewhere in, in the world and they can't get a ghost phone shipped to them or a ghost pad, um, they can reach out to you, and and I'm sure you're happy to point them in the right direction too. Um, cause I get a lot of emails like that and it's like, dude, I have no idea. Oh, sure. <laughs> I have no idea. So, yeah. 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 Because I, I used to do a lot of international sales, even through eBay, but, um, it just got too difficult. And another thing with the international sales is if something goes wrong, it's a lot harder for me to deal with. I mean, yeah. just on Recover a lot of levels. Losses. So when yeah. I commit to an international sale, yeah, like I'm opening myself up to a lot more possible um, issues, basically. Like yeah, I've had, I've I, th had th I think there was one um, ghost phone last year that was opened by Customs in Canada too. Um, I think I was like, I think that was a Canada order. It arrived like a week late, and Customs opened it up. Which yeah. this one, yeah, yeah. The what really <laughs> this one time. Um, a customer bought one in some Scandinavian country, but he was in South America or something. And I forget the exact instructions and I shipped it with the instructions and it ended up bouncing around the world. Um, and it ended up in like New York. <laughs> it's like, and then like, um, it, it was all beat up and I couldn't collect it. I couldn't collect insurance on it. And it was just, way more hassle yeah. than the like than it's 50 yeah. to a hundred dollars I was making on it. Yeah. Like, but yeah. you know, that's, that's my hesitancy to do anything um, with the international shipping. If I have to like try to sneak batteries or something like that, I just, right, it's yeah. not if, worth if, it for if, me. Yeah. If there's an extra hurdle like that, yeah, I, I certainly get it. Yeah. No. Um, and, and I have had like, very privacy security culture minded folks. Um, but I had some guy email me and it was like, uh, yeah, I'm in France. Could, uh, I pay upon delivery. It's like, we are not set up for that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh yeah. We I've, I've not gotten set up for that. Of, Weird a request. requests. <laughs> a lot of. Yep. Yep. 
Oh it's yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know. May, <laughs> maybe it was a spook, or maybe it was genuinely someone who's like, maybe they've got infrastructure here in fucking France or wherever that wherever the hell it was. Um, but no, we we did not, and it did not happen. Well, it actually still did happen. Uh, that one did happen, but it was via a more traditional route. Um, yeah, the passing transportation logistics network is not out there yet. Um, slowly expanding. I just got a, a message in the Pasnia committee correspondence chat. Um, yeah, Pasnia flag was spotted in central Mexico. So we are everywhere, but <laughs> we are not everywhere. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, we are nowhere. Yeah. So anyway, enough ramble. It, it's uh, yeah, about an hour and a half. I don't really got anything else. Um, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. Re- 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 it, it, it's always fun reconnecting. Um, seems like, both of our oh, focuses likewise. now um, are <clears> – <throat> well, I know it seems like our focuses are opposite because um, for the past four or five years, it's been completely focused on digital for the most part. And um, in the past year or so, it has not been. But um, it's good getting back, especially the winter months on a homestead. Those are good ones for experimenting, and we're going to be looking into um, – um, and this will interest this this will interest you too, Jamin. Um, like uh, these are breakthrough energy ideas, like crystal batteries and things. Um, cri- we're going to be doing some crystal okay. battery, um, I guess some R and D here on the homestead. And um, so obviously, like these things might not be able to take a homestead off grid, but just imagine like in a homestead sense, if you can just like uh, hook a pump up, like hook a pump or like a water heater, or something like like something to like thaw the water for the ruminants or something like that. Some small bullshit. Like it doesn't matter. But if you can avoid having extension yeah. cords running all across the property, like that's huge for huge for homesteaders. So like I, I heard about the crystal battery idea and I was like, holy yeah. shit! <laughs> like there it is. Um, money I'm talking about, you know, off grid, off grid yeah, energy at that point. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, um, so, so some of these things too. You know, we're talking about like the nomad, uh, the nomad impl- uh, installations, of like the ghost sentinel and things. Energy oh. might not be a concern <laughs> in a few years. So um, I guess, uh, yeah. And and for that one, I would just reference people to the last interview with Sky Huddleston. <laughs> might be one th- TVP one thirty nine, maybe. Um, but yeah, just just find the last interview with Scott Huddleston when he's talking about how much energy um, can be produced by a Bork engine, which can fit into a car. Um, which, if you get a parking lot of those things wow. together, uh, a small parking lot of those things together, you've got a nuclear power plant's worth of energy. Um, so create like crazy possibilities. And and I mentioned this to you, Jamin. Just um, just. You know, I'm, I, you you might have listened to it. You might have been too busy and not, but um, energy potentialities are. Um, I don't know. Like it's it's it's. I'm not as I'm not one of those like boots on the ground like actually building the stuff. But um, the folks are around me, and the shit's happening. So I I don't think we're gonna recognize the world that we live in in the next five years or so. Um, and I think that's for the best. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. So, Jamin, anything else before I let you go? Otherwise, I'll close her out of us like three times so far. So, I'll, I'll stop after this one. <laughs> no, no. No, I'm, right. no, no uh, bullet pointed ends. Cool. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Uh, Jamin Baconic. Uh, reach out to him by email for all things tech related. That he can actually solve, um, but uh, um, see, it, not everything. Um, it's not open for all your requests. How to cook your dinner or anything like that. Um, like he's willing to do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, definitely make sure to check out our Telegram committee correspondence, um, or I guess uh, Signal or anywhere else um, for the uh, the Simplex chats um, and the various projects. Um, join and get involved. Uh, we don't necessarily always need soft, you know, developers and hackers and things like that. Uh, at some point, we will simply need just end user testers like myself because, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe I blame it on the patients, but maybe I just don't. Maybe I just can't do programming and development, which I'm okay with. Um, but uh, for the for those of us who can't um, do those sorts of things, you know, beta testing is always great and user testing. So hop in those simple X chats, get on there, get familiar with it. It works great. Um, as long as you can get connected, um, there's, there, there's been out of like 20 people, one or two who have had just endless issues 
you know, connecting with anybody or any chat or anything. So I've got to reach out to Simplex chat, see what the fuck's going on there. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, Simplex, join, get involved. Um, like I said, we'll host another Pasadena Second Realm Assembly, uh, Department of Technology meeting in, in the next month or two. Uh, to begin bringing these projects to fruition, uh, we're very, very close on a number of them. So, um, and we've already done this one right now. That's uh, making this happen. Um, I'll mention the Pasadena Spring Gathering, April fifth to ninth, uh, for the Great North American Eclipse. Um, I come, but yeah, Second Realm totality for the Great North American Eclipse. Uh, we are right here uh, in Little Egypt, and uh, we are yeah, right there. I don't know what that necessarily means. I've been trying to figure it out for a couple of few years or so. Um, and why there's all this Egyptian shit in Southern Illinois. Um, <laughs> well, there's a reason for it. But there's also some fake information. So i got to figure out exactly what that's about. But regardless, we're here in the totality. So come out for the Pasadena Spring Gathering. Um, obviously, all the normal stuff. But this will be a, a, a very special event. Um, we do have our um, our telescope, which hopefully will be set up for that at that time. Um, the Pasadena Secret Space Program. Um, otherwise, yeah, we talked about the advanced ghost phone with Graphene OS, now available, libertyintact.com forward slash ghost phone 2. Um, and then just generally, libertyintact.com for uh, various books on self-liberation, um, bundles, privacy tools, and more. And uh, I guess lastly, I'll just leave it with, uh, if you want to make a, a custom one-time donation to the Second Realm, uh, we'd certainly appreciate it. Um, just go to the Pasnia store, Pasnia.com. Uh, we accept Fiat, Bitcoin, uh, or Monero. Um, they're all appreciated. Um, but actually, shit, no, we don't. Monero, shucks, speaking of open source projects, complications with Monero. I can accept Bitcoin and Lightning, but if you want to give it a bit Monero donation, send me an email at coordinator at because it's not easy, um, even via the BTC pay server route. Um, yeah. I would love to accept Monero. I'm open up to it, but it's a pain in the dick to accept. But Bitcoin, always there, always ready to accept Lightning even right now. Um, but that won't be for much longer. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, FonniePodcast.com, LibertyInterTech.com. And, uh, yeah, until next time. Because that's really the issue that we're dealing with with these, you know ghost phones, ghost pads, whatever, is that there's no way that you can organize with with other people and have these distributed tribes if you have a snitch in your pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. People are literally wearing wires all the time. They have a snitch in their pocket and they're trying to do clandestine things. That's never going to work. You know, I'm focused on this project now because I really see how the unfettered flow of communication is what really has prompted this, you know, shift in consciousness. And that if this does, if this can't continue this way and people can't communicate freely with each other, then all the dis distributed networks that have formed um, aren't going to be very effective and they're not going to, uh, they're not going to be able to do what they could do. Um, if you can't communicate, especially when you're basically part of a dispersed tribe at this point, if you can't communicate without being monitored, it basically hamstrings anything, you know, anything going forward. Step up your privacy and order a ghost phone today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. And make sure to keep a lookout for more ghost pads, privacy tools, freedom boxes, and more. LibertyUnderAttack.com is the website. Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom. 